Thank you. And moving on to council reports. Council member Ditball. Okay. Since we were just on that LAFCO um, item, uh, I did, uh, I was at the LAFCO meeting. Um, it was a couple of weeks ago, and it was approved that the period, of, the protest period was going to go from 21 to 45 days. The normal protest period is 21 to 60 days. So we, fe we felt as the LAFCO, um, LAFCO, we, uh, together we felt that 45 was uh, a reasonable time versus 21. So uh, that was that meeting. Um, aside from that, we did... Uh, there was some cancellations of other meetings. We did attend, all of us attended the League of California Cities in Long Beach last week. That was um, many, many sessions that I personally attended um, and got more information and hopefully be able to move forward with some new projects here in town. Um, one of the projects that I did pick up on last year when I attended was the summer at City Hall. This year I was actually privileged to speak on the panel of engaging youth and presenting summer at, youth, uh, at City Hall and how it was put together for Yuba City. So I was there representing Yuba City um, with that program. This coming year I'm hoping to expand it, um, not only to have more students here in Yuba City, but hopefully even make it a regional program that includes Yuba County as well as Sutter High School and so forth and chartered schools as well so that we can get more kids involved in the program to learn about public service and community involvement. So I was very, very privileged to be there. Um, second, um, I was also honored to speak with Congress Garamendi this uh, last week um, for the uh, representing Yuba City and Sutter County, uh, the 2016 Women of the Year um, on women's issues and community engagement. Um, so I was very, very honored and privileged to be asked to speak alongside him. Um, this past Saturday, attended the National Seek campaign, um, great dinner activities or music, um, and this campaign strives to bring education and awareness about the Sikh community and the culture. So it was a beautiful event, an amazing, amazing singer. I believe he was on American Idol. Um, Indian Idol. Indian Idol, right? Um, yeah, so amazing, amazing voice, but the program was very, very well taken and um, I, I was glad that I, I was able to attend. Aside from that, I think that's it. Thank you very much. And moving on to Council Member Dukes. A couple items to report. Uh, attended the Sutter Buttes Flood Control meeting last Wednesday. Um, we are moving forward with the Laurel Avenue project next year, but we are continuing continuing to work on the gap projects uh, locally here at the Fifth Street Bridge, uh, the um, at the uh, Biggs Bridge, the erosion control project there, and I believe there's one other at the uh, Union Pacific Rail uh, crossing on the, the levee. So we're moving ahead with those. Uh, attended the um, Mosquito Vector board meeting, um, and, and we're winding down this time of year as, as the activity of mosquitoes uh, seems to taper off dramatically at this point. But uh, uh, this year we had uh, another high year, and when you look at the numbers that we have here per capita, we have some of the highest numbers in the state here in this area, and a lot of it has to do with the rice fields and the standing water from the rice, and so it is something that we need to be vigilant on and, and keep, keep watch on each year. That's all I have to report. Thank you. And Council Member Gill. Uh, I was not able to make this Abufka meeting, but I believe you pinched it for me. I was out of town. A lot of stuff is happening with the Sutter Buttes Flood Control Agency, a lot of meetings. Uh, and like Council Member Dukes had mentioned, is they are fixing the GAP project. The, a project that was originally done by the Army Corps of Engineers uh, had a pl put a slurry wall uh, right through town here when back in 1997. Unfortunately, the slurry wall was not deep enough, so it's not a safe so at their cost, uh, we're going back and having that work done. It's supposed to be done in about a 10-day period. Um, we are uh, also trying to go after additional state monies for some additional projects, which hopefully by the next meeting in November, I can tell you what they are and what dollar amounts we're trying to go after, because uh, they're still in the preliminary change uh, uh, age stages. Uh, also attended the League of City meetings. Uh, we attend a lot of different sessions and meetings. 
and you hope to walk away with something that you can go, wow, that was worthwhile attending. Uh, the mayor and I, uh, during our, um, uh, what is it, down on the floor? Expo. Yeah, the expo. Uh, went and saw this uh, modular home and uh, once we toured it and got a nice take of it, they use that for uh, transition homeless shelters. And, uh, and I believe the mayor was able to bring back a little CD disc it or a flash drive that has it all loaded on it. But they're able to put it on 2.3 acres. And I believe it houses about 120 uh, people or so forth. And uh, the cost was uh, pretty minimal compared to what I honestly thought um, I mean, it's great to put the homeless folks, you know, in a nice spot, but I, it's a better alternative than the tough sheds, in my opinion. And again, it's transitional housing, 2.3 acres. They're able to make gardens out of, uh, the, you know, out of the area, and they're take, able to take the food, sell it out on the farmer's market. And again, it's not permanent housing, but, uh, but it's transitional. And I think uh, uh, with my time limited here, but I'm definitely something that the mayor can work with the other jurisdictions and see if we can put something like that in our community, which is kind of nice. Uh, was they also able to attend uh, with many of the city officials here the... Uh, on Sunday night, the National Sikh Organization has put on a fundraiser uh, to help raise awareness for Sikhs. You know, who are Sikhs? Uh, what's their values? What does it stand for? Too often, the Sikhs are being um, not being recognized in a proper way. They're being taken wrong as far as ISIS or, you know, Islamics, Muslims, whatever you want to call it. So I think it's just uh, working now uh, with Dr. Rajwant Singh, who's from Washington, D.C., who's working with David Axelrod and President Obama's marketing team, uh, buying about $1.2 million worth of advertisements on CNN, Fox News, NBC, and so forth. So you'll probably start seeing some of those come come across the airways. And in one night here, we raised $132,000 in Yuba City. So that goes uh, that goes quite a long way. So thank you to all the citizens of the city of Yuba City. And it was great to see that our staff, our council members from here, our chief of police, our city manager, Mr. Gale, and our chief of police, district attorney, Sheriff Parker. We had a great, great community representation as well as members of the uh, Seek East Indian community from the city of Yuba City. So that's all I have. Thank you very much. And uh, man, time's growing short. It is. You know? Moving on to our Vice Mayor, Stan Cleveland. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, I had a very light uh, two weeks and stuff uh, on meetings. Uh, many canceled and things going on with other jurisdictions. But I did attend the uh, Legal, League of City Conference. Um, and uh, as a member of the board of the Sacramento, North Sacramento uh, Division, and on one of the committees, the environmental quality, and I think it's um, land use. Um, luckily, we didn't have a meeting with that one. We had resolved everything. Uh, didn't have to have a meeting down there. Um, I have reapplied or am reapplying for those two uh, positions, and hopefully I can uh, serve the community in uh, trying to shape the policy and make sure that our rural communities are highly considered. And, and there are some good people on those committees uh, protecting um, our uh, position in, in uh, government. I <coughs> um, attended many sessions, and I will make note that I attended uh, Preet's presentation, and I th thought it was excellent. There were different variations of the same type of uh, efforts going on in different communities. And it all depended on the size of the community as to how broad it expanded, whether they had um, large amounts of money to put towards it or not also. Uh, ours was, I think, uh, fantastic, uh, the effort in her presentation. Um, let's see. I also attended two main sessions that I really wanted was interested in, was uh, dealing with fire departments and EMTs and how the, the data is thrown about and bantered and from both sides and stuff sometimes, and learning um, how to properly uh, analyze uh, the different datas uh, and databases that are brought out. So that is going to be very helpful for me in the next uh, year or two dealing with uh, uh, fire issues and, and employees. Um, we had some interesting morning sessions or general sessions. One of them, I just got to say this, the guy just went out and did it and didn't tell anybody. He went out to a section of a street 
was his experiment. It was kind of a little rundown, uh, and they brought in props and trees and benches and did some uh, basically water-based paints on the streets and put bike trails. They did all kinds of stuff on one section of a downtown street and then invited everybody in there to come in just, you know, to be part of it. Uh, and he didn't get permission. He just put the orange, orange vests on and went and did it, a big team of them. And the, um, the people loved it. Um, and uh, now he and, and the city eventually um, agreed to allow some of this stuff in the city and to do that. And then he's done projects uh, all over the United States now. I think he's done some international stuff too. And uh, they go in there and they assess some things and they just start doing that volunteer. And they test it, see what the community has to say about it. And uh, if the community likes it um, and supports what's going on, because they can actually see real time the benefit for businesses it is, and um, instead of just having stark buildings and streets and sidewalks. And it's, um, it was really kind of uh, funny sometimes because he said, uh, I didn't ask permission, I just did it. And um, he never truly got in trouble, but uh, I can tell you he, um, and he was kind of funny a, a little bit uh, on how he presented it. I appreciate um, his candor and uh, gave us some ideas as to maybe what we could do um, in our community to, uh, you know, give some tests to some areas and let people know this is what it could look like. Um, so I want to at least pursue that in concept uh, in the future. Um, other than that, um, I just kept my, we had a lot of uh, meeting with the other council members from other cities. Uh, had two, th two, two and a half hour sessions where people, we wanted to get together and discuss uh, the same issues in each big city, small city, and find out how we're each dealing with it. And I uh, got some interesting uh, takes on homelessness and uh, transportation and affordable housing from uh, some of the different uh, um, council members. So it was, uh, it was really a productive time, I think, for me. So hopefully we can move some forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vice Mayor. <clears throat> uh, kind of stepping back from, I guess, back in time, uh, the city manager and I went and attended the memorial service out of Beale Air Force Base for Lieutenant Colonel um, Edie. Uh, and that was a, a remarkable um, moment just to be able to listen to um, friends, family, and a, uh, an individual that, that uh, as, and actually uh, uh, Council Member Dukes was out there along with his wife. Um, but uh, it, it, was, it was incredible to, to listen to, to this gentleman's uh, career, but even more so, brought me to realize that we have a great community. Um, and part of that is that this gentleman had traveled throughout the United States, uh, first being in the Navy, uh, started out in Florida and uh, settled in, as he transferred to the Air Force, settled in Lincoln, California, and enjoyed so much uh, the area that his growing family and aging family began to settle down around, and he chose not to uh, promote further in the military so he could serve uh, the U.S. Uh, military as a flight instructor and also to um, begin spending more time with his family um, in, the, in the area. So I thought that that was a great testimony uh, to, to uh, just what a remarkable person uh, he must have been, never met him, uh, but certainly uh, you could tell the loss was deep in the organization. Um, went to League of California Cities, and there's a number of things that I can report back on. The Vision Zero uh, resolution was modified in committee in advance of uh, the final vote. So what we had looked at here uh, as a city council um, ended up being modified uh, to uh, with language that this, the intent of it was not for the state or any other governmental agency to use that as a restriction for funding uh, in the future. So that was a, a good um, uh, concern 
and and certainly the modification the modification was was a good thing uh, we also looked at as as uh, uh, cash said we looked at uh, this modular home setup um, I think it's remarkable um, and and I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second but also we located at the direction or request of uh, the police department looked at uh, a camera system for uh, being able to set up portably uh, throughout our town and as the paper reported it looks like the housing authority uh, will be becoming a partner we certainly talked to the vendor about private partner or private public partnerships um, with this camera system it's a lower cost high quality uh, system that can be used uh, for anything from vandalism to gang activities so we are uh, extremely uh, pleased with with what we found uh, during the during the expo portion of that not to say uh, how many uh, actually um, sessions that we went through and, and learned tremendously whether it be homeless issues or or whatever um, it, it was a, a remarkable time to to be down there also attended the uh, retirement for John Blevins, Yuba City Fire Fighter, who started his career at the Walton uh, Station when it was Walton Fire Department. Uh, moved uh, some 14 years ago over to the city, 15 years ago over to the city, and um, retired almost to the moment uh, that he turned 50 years old. So uh, it was it was maybe the closest I had ever seen this shaved uh, for retirement, um, even though his official time was eight o'clock the following morning. Uh, the retirement took place at uh, one o'clock and he was born at 106. So if you ever run into John Blevins in, in public, uh, congratulate him for the time that he spent uh, in service to our community. Also attended the Sabufka meeting um, in uh, cash is dead and uh, the actually was a fairly short meeting but progress moves forward and uh, as as uh, a couple projects um, will be moving in uh, during the the uh, fall and winter uh, that will get us closer to a completion date of the largest levy project um, currently in the United States also attended SACOG's uh, GRAPA meeting um, this is Government Relations and Public Affairs uh, Committee, and uh, nothing uh, substantial to report out of that. Uh, did attend the Ride Out uh, Memorial Hospital expansion uh, dinner, uh, and, and many of the members of the city were there. Um, I know Cash was there, our city manager was there, and, and uh, Mr. Gale uh, was there. Uh, remarkable facility that we now have um, that will be opening in its entirety to our community. The equipment, the type of equipment, and the ability of that equipment will advance um, care in our community far beyond uh, what is currently available within the region. And, and I would dare say that it exceeds the capability of some of the, of the uh, hospitals down in um, Sacramento, even though I didn't see a direct PEDS department um, in the hospital they are making some advances towards treatment um, along those lines but all other care uh, it's it is a tremendous uh, facility also attended the casa de esperanza fundraiser actually i was the uh, guest of mike and, and colleen uh, for that uh, it was a night of humor uh, along with with uh, the ability to raise funds and uh, continue to promote uh, the good work of casa de esperanza a um, couple things moving forward. Mayor's Cup will be held on the 28th of this month. Um, it'll be Yuba City and River Valley High School. So if you all want to see a good football game, uh, both of them are pretty well matched up, I think, this year. Uh, so that, that should be a, a good time. Uh, this Friday, we are... Uh, going to have an event down on Reeves Avenue by Plymouth Street again where we will be uh, doing the ribbon cutting for phase one of the Bridge Street project and then uh, unveiling what phase two three and four will look like and announcing the the um, un, the kind of review of our downtown specific plan 
and getting some cooperative uh, input um, on that process moving forward. Uh, so we're, we're looking at blowing a little dust off of the uh, covers of our books um, here at, at City Hall. It's been a while since it's been reviewed. And then also um, make a note that on November 2nd, here at City Hall, we're going to have a, um, a reception for a rather remarkable individual in our community um, who, when we talk about seek awareness, has led this community to a deeper understanding uh, since 1980. Um, started a, a small parade with, goodness, I think it was about 300 people, if I remember it right. I didn't count them all. Um, and currently, uh, the, the whole concept that he had, the vision that Mr. Didar Baines had uh, back in, in the late 70s and uh, that first event in 1980 um, was to bring the community uh, together as one uh, for a celebration, and uh, it has been remarkable over the years. Um, grew from 300 to, we have no idea now. Nobody gets to take their shoes off and count, uh, but, but it's probably has reached up to 100,000 people uh, for, for just an amazing three-day uh, festival and event uh, culminating in the parade on Sunday. Um, so we're going to have a, a reception for him um, here and, uh, and, and thank him as a community for everything that he has done. So with that. Through the mayor, I have one additional item I'd like to add. On Friday, October 28th, our sister, sister city delegation comes from Torridae City. Thank would you. like to invite the public to be here to welcome them. As you came in tonight, you saw the new garden that was put together with, by, I believe, Yuba City Rotary. And uh, they've done a nice job. It's not quite finished yet, but it's getting very close. And thank you, Mr. Gale, for your help in, in that also. He, he operated a shovel, not the skid steer. Uh, okay. Because <laughs> the rocks and trees are still there. <laughs> so. Exactly. <laughs> But I uh, just wanted to let our public know that that is uh, an event coming up that we have participated in, I believe, now 26 years. So uh, it's, it's uh, a great relationship with our sister city and uh, want to continue that. Yeah, th and, and thank you for, I, I knew I was going to be dropping the ball on one item out of all of these. But uh, again, uh, great relationship and, and certainly welcome everyone. Uh, to come out to that. It's, uh, it's remarkable. The kids arrive here speaking absolutely no English and they leave speaking no English. Um, <laughs> but we learn a few words in Japanese out of absolute need. Um, but no, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, they're going to be very busy in our community uh, for, for that week. And uh, if they come up trick-or-treating at your door, um, don't give them the, the treat. Um, let them pull a trick on you. Let's see how that works out for them. So um, with that, we'll adjourn tonight's meeting.